Hello everyone. Today's topic, jazz. I'm currently a junior studying music composition, and we were tasked for my ethnomusicology class to find a way to investigate a local musical practice. So I decided to choose jazz, since there's a huge scene here in Rutgers, New Brunswick, and I'm not really a part of it, and I would like to be. My plan for this project is to focus on the local jazz aspect scene of Rutgers. We have a huge jazz program, but also we have a huge local scene through both basement shows and a restaurant called the Tavern on George. The Tavern on George is paired with a group called the New Brunswick Jazz Project, which focuses on bringing local jazz people and some more professional groups in to a local accessible scene for everyone. So before I get further into what I would like to do for this project, I think it's important to go over what my background is in jazz. Uh, growing up in my town, we had jazz big bands, which is what I primarily did, in addition to concert bands and some other things. And that was my mostly the influence that I had in jazz music. In addition to studying jazz in my town, I also had the opportunity to go to the Wells Fargo Jazz for Teens program, which I did for two years when I was in seventh and eighth grade, which was a lot of fun. So now we get to college. Uh, I'm a comp music composition student. I focus primarily on classical music. One thing I've noticed about college is that everything feels very separated, where if you do classical, you are doing classical. If you do jazz, you are doing jazz. And that's something that I would really like to break down and sort of help merge the two worlds together. Looking at the school side of things, one of the hugest influences is the head of the jazz department, Conrad Erwig. Now he is a phenomenal jazz trombonist. I've had the, uh, the pleasure of working with him a long time ago at a Rutgers jazz summer camp. And unfortunately I haven't had too many interactions with him in college. But going on an interview with him, by uh, Bob Bernatos, he goes on to say that, Conrad goes on to say that one of his biggest influence, influences for playing jazz trombone is not jazz trombone. He, when studying trombone, he wanted to sound like other instruments and he kind of thought, why can't I play lines like Charlie Parker? So he went and he studied and followed recordings of these great artists that he admired their soloing and learned how to do it on trombone. Now, I think this goes true for saying that his students also go and do that. A lot of people in the jazz world, like someone I'm about to interview, do a lot of everything. Uh, ben Dunford, the interview, interviewee that I'll be asking some questions to, is a jazz Barry sax player. But I've also seen him do pit orchestras where he'll play alto sax and clarinet. And I've had the pleasure of marching next to him in the Marching Scarlet Knights where he marches sousaphone which is a bit of an interesting combination. But he's not the only one like that. There are a lot of jazz majors going out of their way to learn other instruments to kind of incorporate all of that into their jazz vocabulary. And I think without having Conrad Erwig there to kind of lead the charge in saying, hey, try learning from a different viewpoint, I think it's really important. And he's helping students push themselves and push the boundaries of what their instrument can do within their styles. For this project, I've interviewed two people one of whom is someone who is a jazz major who is working in the classical world and is helping to make ensembles for people who, like me who are classical musicians who want to study jazz. All right, hello. I'm here with Benjamin Dunford. Hi. What major are you, Ben Dunford? I'm Jazz Studies and Music Ed. Jazz Studies and Music Ed. So, Ben, where did you get your start in music? How did, how did where you are today come to fruition? So, I took piano lessons when I was like a kid. Um, wasn't my shtick. So in fourth grade, uh, we got to choose our instruments, um, and I actually didn't want to play saxophone. Uh, my top choice was trumpet, and then flute, and then percussion. And then my band teacher was like, you should play saxophone. I was like, cool. So I picked up <laughs> saxophone. Um, and I played it for two years. In middle school, I picked up French horn for a little bit. And then I was like, I don't know why I picked up the French horn. So I went back to saxophone. And then I stayed on saxophone throughout all of high school. And now, and now you're here. Now I'm here at the music school. So uh, I, I've heard some rumors that you, you run this, this magical crossover group between classical and jazz. I do actually. Is that so cool? that ensemble is called the Jazz Learning Ensemble. Um, and it's primarily for classical majors and non-majors to get experience in a jazz band setting. 
because I've noticed, I'm sure that a bunch of other people have noticed as well, there's not a lot of overlap between classical and jazz in stated by the department. So if you want to be like a classical cat who plays jazz, you have to be the person who by yourself takes the initiative to learn everything by your name. So the whole point of the ensemble is for um, there to be an overlap between the classical and jazz department on the side of the jazz world. So um, a bunch of the jazz ed majors are there and they're teaching how to play in the big band. So it's, um, it's me, um, Kyle Porter, who's a trombonist, um, Melanie, who's a trombone player, Carlos, um, who's a trumpet player. Um, and then we have some other cats. Uh, I'm not sure if I can use the word cat. You can use cats. I'm using the speech. <laughs> so I have a couple other cats who are just jazz majors who want to help teach. So um, we have Jacob Herlock, who's this absolutely goaded pianist. I'm familiar with uh, Everybody's familiar <laughs> with that cat. Um, uh, they're there to help out with um, like the rhythm section aspect of it. So the rhythm section has somebody to go to to be like, hey, what field do I want? Hey, what chord is this? Yeah. So we have um, we have a decent overlap of non-majors to classical majors. So like we have some cats from the MSK who are non-majors who just really want to play their instrument in another setting. So there's like no audition. You just come in. You can read. You read the charts down. So we have um, we have a couple saxophonists and a couple of trumpet players who are non-majors. Um, we have a couple of trombone players, or we have a trombone player who's a non-major, and then the rest of them are all classical. Um, but it's really cool to kind of get to see like the look on people's faces when they like when stuff finally clicks. Yeah. I, I really like JLE though, and I've heard a lot of really good things about it, and everybody seems to be enjoying it. So. I'm excited to be part of it next semester. And I'm happy to hear that, man. Uh, we have we're trying to do a concert next semester. Um, we're trying to bring in more um, professionals, so um, like Dr. Anthony Branker who's one of the professors at, um, in the jazz department at Mason Gross. Um, he said he'd be interested in coming in and giving a master class on how to play with the ensemble. So, yeah, big thing, big thing yeah. signed up, man. That'll be a lot of fun. Thanks, man, I appreciate it. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs>
different songs that I can play, but the history and the meaning behind those songs. Yeah, and like you've seen like how someone works with an old song. Exactly. It'd be a little bit different. Yeah, for sure. The the directors changed from last year last spring to this fall. So do you do any other any other kind of jazz things here at Rutgers? Um well, every Tuesday night not every Tuesday night, but it's available every Tuesday night. Um I go to a jam session at the Tavern on George. Oh my gosh. Let's roll the footage. <laughs> So in addition to all these local jazz things that are happening, I think it's important to acknowledge part of what makes New Brunswick is Rutgers and part of what makes Rutgers is New Brunswick. The two kind of coexist together with the boundaries between the town and the school not really being clear sometimes where you could just be walking down a street, see a local house, and then the next house is a college building. And I think that goes, that statement goes true for also the traditions of the town itself, where if we look at the tavern, a lot of the groups that go and perform there are student groups and students that go and perform at the jam sessions will be performing with local professionals. Overall, the New Brunswick jazz scene is really alive and thriving. From researching into the institutions that keep music alive, like the New Brunswick Jazz Project, to the head of the jazz department at Rutgers, Conrad Erwig, it really seems like there is a diverse group of people keeping jazz current hip in 2022. I especially enjoyed hearing the perspectives of both a jazz major, Ben Dunford, and a classical major, Anthony Paterno, about this evolving world and culture of jazz that we have here right in New Brunswick. I think it really shows how the jazz culture that we have being built here will accept anyone regardless of their experience or background as long as they're willing to learn.